Open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to take here a little bit from Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. And it says in Acts 2, 40, And with many other words mm, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Verse 41 says, Now, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. In the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Mm. Peter said, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And that's our topic today. Save yourself. Save yourself. You may be seated. Mm. The most important thing this life is your soul. Especially when you consider the days that we live in. Your soul is the main reason that Jesus came to this earth, paid the price to give you the opportunity to receive salvation for your soul. The first century church, amen, that started on this day day of Pentecost that we just read about. They believed that in their day they were living in the last days. Paul speaks of the Antichrist, spirit of Antichrist has already come. The church in its infancy, amen, was already, amen, being inundated with false doctrine, trying to bring confusion, which means the devil will go to any lengths to keep your soul from being saved. And one of his greatest weapons is for you never to receive the truth about how your soul can be saved. God is love. But understand this, you have to know the timing in your life to receive his love. Oh yeah, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. We, we love to minister God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's good. But there's a requirement, amen, in order for what he did on the cross to affect your life. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's pretty powerful. What does it mean then to believe in the Lord? You will find out, amen, in this sermon. His love for you on the cross by shedding his blood, by paying the price, by eliminating, amen, the, the judgment that should have came upon us for our sin is there for you to take advantage of what he did on the cross. If you don't accept what Jesus did on the cross, then for you, amen, him dying on the cross is vain, and your soul will not be saved. In other words, there's something that we have to do. God did his part, but will you do your part? Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. When you read this scripture in the Amplified Version, it, it really speaks of the urgency of Peter's message like this in the Amplified. And Peter solemnly and earnestly witnessed, testified, admonished, exhorted with much more continuous speaking. And he warned them, reproved them, advised them, and encouraged them saying, be saved from this crooked, perverse, wicked, unjust generation. 
In other words, Peter was doing everything he could. He was pleading, admonishing. He, he was trying to find every avenue possible to touch, amen, someone's soul to make a decision for Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what I plan to do here in the next few minutes. I'm going to do everything I can as if this would be the last day that you were ever in church. That this was your last chance, amen, to be saved. I'm going to preach like you'll never hear the word again. Mm. Untoward generation. A generation denotes a family or a group of people, amen, that usually come from the same background or same line. It can also refer to an age or a period of time. But if the Lord pressed into my spirit this week, man is basically from two family lines. You're either saved or unsaved. Mm, and you better know what each one of those means because you fall in one or the other category. And it would be a shame if you think you're saved and you're not. That's the ultimate deception when you have people running around believing and thinking they're saved, but they're not. You better know what the word of God says concerning your soul. Because unlike anything else, you cannot recover from your soul being lost when you die. It's irrevocable. You will go hurling into eternity with your soul unsaved. Mm. You're either born in sin or born again. There's no in between. Jesus said you must be born again of the water and of the spirits. He said you can't see the kingdom of God without being born again. Amen. It cracks me up when people who are not born again want to tell you about what the word. You can't even see what the word says. You have no revelation about God's word until you're born again. All you're giving me is information based on your intellect. It takes spirit, the Holy Spirit, for you to understand what the word says. Uh, you can follow the religions and traditions of men, or you can be a humble follower of Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing that whenever people are trying to make their religious points, that they come across so proudful? Amen. But if you're a true follower of Jesus Christ, and you know Jesus died for your stuff, for your sin, for your mess, amen, there's nothing to be proudful about. Lord, I thank you. I could have died in my sin. I, you could have left me out there. But because of your love, your grace, your mercy, you gave me chances my God, to make a decision to repent and come to you. Mm. Well, people will stand, amen, and, and talk on behalf of God, amen, but, amen, it's only for their own gain or for something that fits their life, amen. It better line up in the word of God. We're talking about your soul here. Mm. You are either of the world and you love the world, or you are of God, and you love the kingdom of God. You know what men try to do? They, they try to find both. They want to love the world, but they want to love God also. It don't work that way. Amen. You either are belonging to the kingdom of God, or you belong to the kingdom of darkness. You either belong to this world, or you belong to God. There is no gray area. And what we do is we like to take gray areas and throw God's love on it. No, you can throw his mercy on it as long as you're alive. But if you die in that gray area, your soul is lost. You are either a lover of sin or a lover of righteousness. Mm. What I love about the word of God is it's plain. It's clear. It's not confusing. We make it confusing because we try to add stuff to it and take stuff out of it. But God is clear. You know why? Because he cares about your soul. Uh. 
Some of you are wondering, what in the world got into Garcia this morning? I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it, Riggs. I'm going to preach it. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon. And you'll never be able to come before God and say, I didn't know, Lord. I, I, didn't, I didn't. No, you're going to know today. Amen. Mm. I care enough about your soul to preach the truth to you, even if you don't like it. I know emotions are going to run today. Some of you are going to be mad. You're going to get hard. Amen. Some of you are already thinking about leaving this church. Amen. That's okay. Do what you're going to do. But you're going to leave here with the truth of God about your soul. I'm going to tell you, as your pastor, I'm not coming before God and saying, uh, uh, God, I, I didn't want them to like me. That ain't happening. Lord, I gave them your word. Hallelujah. 1 John 2.15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's pretty plain right there. Amen. Amen. He says, don't love the world. Don't even love the things that are in the world. And if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, Jesus loves your soul, but he don't love the world. Amen. We're not of this world. If you are born again, you're not of this world. And if you're not born again, you need to escape and get out of this world and get into the kingdom of God because this world's going to burn one day. When God talks about a new heaven and a new earth, he ain't keeping nothing about this world. He's going to burn it up and start over. Man got so bad at one time that God had to recalibrate some stuff and he sent a flood, amen, to try and wash away all the dirt and the mess and the wickedness because man had turned his heart from God and he saved eight souls in a boat. Word goes on to say that such as those days were, so shall the days be in the coming of the Son of Man. Mm. It's no joke out in the world. There's no peace to even leave your house today if your soul's not saved. There's no guarantee you even coming back. In fact, things are so bad, amen, don't even come out of your bedroom because someone you might be living with might take you out. That's how bad it is now. And we got this agenda of all this stuff we want to do, but nowhere on that list is my soul. Mm. In Jesus' prayer before he went to the cross, John 17, 14, he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus didn't pray for the world. He prayed for your soul to get out of the world. And he says, I'm praying because the world hates you. So I'm praying your strength that you can overcome the world and not give in to it, amen, for so-called safety. The world don't care about you. The world will say, oh, we won't hurt you, and then turn around and stab you in the back. Save yourself. Save yourself. Turn around and tell someone, save yourself. I'm your pastor, and I love you, but I'm going to save myself first. <laughs> 
And if I got anything left over, I will help you. Amen. I'll do my best to help you. But bottom line is, no matter how much someone tries to help you, you have to make a decision for your own soul. I can't make that decision for you. You got to love your own soul enough to be saved. You only get one soul. Amen. Amen. Baptism. Hallelujah. Save yourself. Thank you, Jesus. That's what it's all about right there. Amen. There should be a line lining up for baptism. You don't have tomorrow. You don't even have this afternoon. All you have is right now. Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Meaning it's crooked, it's perverse, it's unjust, it's wicked, and it's unfair. Amen. Here we go. Hallelujah. Line them up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's your soul, brother. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. And can I say this? Don't be standing up clapping if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. Because you can clap and praise God and you'll bust hell wide open. You better save yourself. <laughs> we live in a fallen world. It's an unfair world. It's been infiltrated and cursed by sin. It's broken and it can't be fixed, which shows you how devastating sin can be. Sin can get a grip on you and you can't get out of it unless, amen, you just make a decision to point toward Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can set you free. You got to be careful Woo, about things being unfair and unjust in this world. You can, you, you can march, pass legislation, vote people into office. Amen. You might even make a difference in this world. But if your soul's not saved, it's all for naught. I was looking at just, just the things that have happened this week. Thank you, Jesus. Just this week. Amen. Earlier in the week, we had the Freddie Gray funeral. And all the unrest that came with it. This young man probably did not deserve to die. He should have been given another chance. He, he shouldn't have died in police custody. But instead, he's laying in a box. With all the injustice that may have happened, amen, in his arrest or after his arrest. There's really only one question that I'm concerned about Freddie Gray. And was his soul saved? Because you don't have a guarantee in this world. Peter said it's an untoward generation. You don't know when someone's going to pull you over and just shoot you dead. You better, you know what? That is an expectation that that's exactly what this world does. And the scripture already says the world hates you. You don't have to be a person of color. Just be a Christian. Hey Amen. This world hates you. And we should stand for injustice. And we should stand for righteousness. I'm not saying not that, but the bottom line is, is your soul saved?
That lets you know how untoward this generation is, how perverse this generation is, how people abuse power in this world and in this generation. That's why your soul needs to be saved. Mm, next image, please. So now we got to put things out and amen and have marches and and do things to try and change some laws. But let me tell you something. No matter what laws you legislate, the world's still going to hate you. Things are not going to get better in this world. They're going to get worse. Let your soul be saved. Next image. Oh, we love this image. You know what I see in this image? I see the radical love of God. This is a mother who was watching TV and saw her baby out on the street. She said, you've got to be kidding me. Don't you know they'll kill you out here? Boy, you better get home. Boy, you better get home where it's safe. Sometimes God has to slap you upside the head, amen, to try and get your soul saved. He has to do something in your life to try and bring you to a place of repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Line them up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She's trying to save her son. Tell him, get home. It's amazing to me because here you are in broad daylight in front of the cameras and everything, and she's slapping her boy upside the head. But if you do that, amen, in your own house, amen, someone may call CPS on you and you lose your child. Amen. But you know what? A mother don't care. Do what you're going to do. I'm trying to save my baby out here. Amen. That's what God is saying right now. I'm trying to save my babies, amen, from their souls going to hell. Hmm. Next image. Here we have earthquakes. Bible says earthquakes in diverse places. God is so loving and merciful. He gave us warnings and said there'll be earthquakes. This last week, earthquake in Nepal. Amen. In here. Amen. These men have taken someone who's been buried by rubble. Amen. And trying to get them help. Had to dig them out. Amen. To get help. Question is this, even though that's a sign from God of a fallen world, amen. Question is this, was that person saved? Mm. Next image. You see, the earth. God is just showing us a little crack of the earth opening up. This earth is shaking knowing that God is coming soon. That Jesus is soon to crack the sky. The earth is trying to tell us, get it together. Next. Look at this. Appears to be a woman who was buried in rubble. They dug her out. But you know what that showed me? Amen. That's the condition we're in in the world. In our muck in our mire, lost in sin. But it took Jesus to come and rescue us, to clean us up, to set us free. That's the effects of a fallen world right there. That's why your soul's got to be saved because you don't know when the next earthquake's coming. And we live on a fault in California. There's going to be an earthquake. I just can't tell you when. But the question is, when it comes, and if you're buried under rubble, is your soul saved? Oh, my. Because it rains on the just and the unjust. Thank you, Jesus. Found out this morning. We ready to baptize? Amen. Let's do it. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't think Rick needs a mic. Trust me. That's a mama. That's that mama trying to save my son, Jesus. Save my son, Jesus.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the remission of your sins. All right. Just let me know when the next one is. I'm going to keep preaching. Hallelujah. Just this morning, amen, and this week, earthquake in Mississippi. Earthquake in Michigan. The whole earth is shaking. Folks have left California to go to Mississippi just so the earth don't shake. But it's shaking there. It's shaking, amen, in Michigan. It's shaking in places where it's never had earthquakes before. God is saying, I'm coming soon. Get your soul right. <laughs> Jesus himself spoke of warnings. He said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdoms shall rise against kingdom and earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Amen. This is going to happen all the time. Amen. Next. Amen. Sorry, next one. That's, that shows a before and after of an earthquake in Nepal. No, you're going backwards. Go forward. Amen. Next one. There it is. Lord saying things are dry. California, we're in a drought, but you know what? We ain't moved as long as you can turn on your faucet and still take a shower and get some water. You ain't even thinking about it. The governor has already said the days of green grass in California are over. Just signs. Just signs and wonders. That's all that is. Things are drying up. Amen. We ready for another baptism? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sins are remitted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I am Oshasa. Save yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's drought in the land. Things are drying up. He said there'd be signs and wonders in the heavens. Next slide. Oh, yeah, blood moons. We had two blood moons last year. Both of, them fell, both of them fell on Jewish feast days. We had a blood moon, amen, earlier this year. Fell on a Jewish feast day. One more is coming, amen. It'll be on a Jewish feast day. What is God saying? God is saying, I'm getting ready to do something with my people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. For the remission of your sins. Glory to your holy name. For the remission of your sins. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See the Holy Ghost. Ah, ba, 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 sa. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Oh, 
Ababasha. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. Ayabasha Tamasa. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins <laughs> that's a smart man first time I've ever been in this church our only guest today and he went down in the waters of baptism in Jesus name Woo! amen Oh, we got another one. My God. <laughs> Woo! Christ for the remission of your sins. Anybody else? <laughs> ah. Save yourself. Put the blood moons back up. Let me tell you how close this thing is. Blood moons represent God's sign to Israel. Right? We're getting four of them in a row. God is saying, I'm getting ready to turn back to Israel. In other words, he's getting ready to take his church away from this world. Save yourself. Amen. Next image. There shows the four in a row, and it shows you when the next one's going to be. Amen. We've had the, the, the solar eclipse in the middle of it, and now we're waiting for one more blood moon to happen, which I believe is in September. How much time do we really have? Well, let me tell you something. You don't have till September 20th. All you have is today. Save yourself. Next image. He said there'd be wars. Here we see ISIS taking people face down and just shooting them dead in a shallow pit. That's what the world is like. That's what a fallen world will do. Don't care about you. Ah, God, he's coming soon. The question is, were they saved? Amen. Was their soul saved? Hallelujah. Save yourself. Next image. Mm. Israel has to be ready. It amazes me, amen, that the United States, and we got to pray for our nation. Amen. Because if you don't follow the word of God, you'll fall right into the hands of the devil. But Iran has already declared that they, as soon as they can build a nuclear weapon, they will blow up Israel. They will eliminate Israel. They have vowed it. And yet we allow politically, we're allowing sanctions now for, amen, funds and money to go back into Iran. What do you think they're going to do with that money? The devil going to lie in your face. We ain't going to build nothing. You better be on God's side. Amen. Israel is God's chosen people. We are all grafted into Israel. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm praying. Hallelujah. But bottom line, you better save yourself. 
Because whenever you turn against God's people, amen, you curse yourself as a nation, which means things are not going to get better in the United States. They're going to get worse. You better save yourself next. Amen. And for all of you who are in the armed forces, thank you. We love you. But please do not go to war without your soul being saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next image. Amen. It's amazing how the press will ask this question. World War III, will it begin in the Middle East? Well, the word already told us that answer. That's the problem. The world doesn't know the word of God. They don't know. Of course it's going to be in the Middle East. The word already told us it would be. Mm. Save yourself. Time is here. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? And lose his soul. Look at the value of a soul. Amen. You can turn that image off. It's amazing. This morning I turned on the news just to see, amen, what, amen, the Satan report was for this morning. And sure enough, amen, it, it amazed me. Warren Buffett is having a birthday or something. Multi-billionaire. Amen. Got so much money, amen, that he has everything this world has to offer. And, and he, he can't live long enough, really, to give his money away. Ask him, what would you do different? Multi-billionaire. You know what he said? I wish I would have started earning money sooner. You already got billions, man. I looked at it, I said, I can't believe that. But that's what happens when you're only concerned about what this world can give you and not concerned about your soul. You can have all the fame and riches of the world. You can have anything and everything this world has to offer. But it's not worth losing your soul over. Jesus said in Mark 8, 37, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Is your soul for sale? Will you give up, amen, your soul for Five, 10, 15 minutes of pleasure? Because in that 15, 20 minutes, what if the Lord comes? Amen. How will your soul go into eternity? Save yourself. It's amazing in Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said this, Fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, if you die without Christ, if you die and your soul's not saved, amen, then all that's left for you is the lake of fire. I know people like to say, oh, I don't believe in hell. It don't matter whether you believe in it or not. The word says there's a hell. There's a lake of fire. And if your soul's not saved, that's exactly where you'll end up for eternity. Jesus was so plain. Amen. He said unto them, 8, 23, 24 of John, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I'm not of this world. I say therefore unto you, if you shall die in your sins, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Save yourself. To die in your sins is to be eternally cut off from God. It is eternal separation from God. If hellfire is not enough, it's that I'm separated from God and I can't get back to him. Revelation 20 and 15 makes it very plain. Whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. People are trying to tell you, no, no, the lake of fire is only for the devil and the demons and the antichrist and the false prophet. No, the scripture says whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. It's plain. It's the word of God. Save yourself. That's why you cannot delay. Tomorrow's not promised. Hebrews 3.15. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Don't rebel against the word of God. When you hear the God, word of God, respond to it. It's God's love for you. 
Otherwise, you are rebelling against his word. And to rebel means you have to harden your heart, even if it's for a moment. And once you can harden your heart, you can get used to hardening your heart. Save yourself. They asked Peter, what do we do? Peter, what do we do? You got us. You say we crucified the Messiah, and we did. We killed an innocent man. What do we do? Peter said, repent. Repent. All repentance is is making a direction toward God. That's it. We can't overcome sin. God gives us power to overcome sin through the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What I'm so moved about is after Peter said to them, save yourself from this untoward generation, it says this, they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day, there was added 3,000 souls. Today, those that gladly received the word were baptized. And what did we do? We added today seven souls. Hallelujah. Save yourself. Save yourself. Stand with me right now. And if there's anybody here that has not been baptized yet, amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have been baptized, but if you were not baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know how you were baptized, why would you play with the word? Rebaptism, amen, is important to do it the right way. I'm reminded of Paul, he came upon some disciples. He asked them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, we, we haven't heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. So then Paul says, well, how are you baptized? He recognized them as disciples. They were obviously living some type of a converted, repented life. But he said, how are you baptized? They said, we're baptized under John the Baptist. Ah, they were baptized under repentance. Peter, I mean, Paul commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were rebaptized. He laid hands on them. They received the Holy Spirit in their lives. You can play with your baptism if you want to. But I admonish you to do it exactly the way the Word of God says. Be baptized today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here that still needs to be baptized? Amen. Hallelujah. Mother, are you coming down to be baptized? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! My, my, my. She's been coming to this church. She even told me a few weeks ago, you know, I haven't been baptized yet. I said, well, Mother, you better take care of business sooner or later here. Today's the day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. Today she has gladly received the word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 